Well, it's another day and I'm still in Abstock. It's our last morning um, to film from here. But hello, anyway, welcome to a kitchen moment yet again. It's video number 69 for those that are going to be in the room. And video 69 is going to become a part two from yesterday. So yesterday we did floor to bar. Today we'll do floor to bar part two. So there'll be less floor because I actually didn't manage to complete the bar. And on having some feedback, appreciate that the bar actually was quite useful to people. So I will do a shortened floor version. In other words, get your abdominals switched on and then you'll be doing a lengthened bar version, which will build on what we did yesterday. It is what we did yesterday and I've added to that. I hope you've got your legs ready. I've got my legs ready. And it's a good morning and hello to Sarah and Donna and Mena and Susan. Um, love to see people piling in. I appreciate that the kind of 9am demand isn't everyone's um, ability. Many people watch this post, which is great. But if you're in the room, let me know. And I have to look really closely because I don't have a big screen. That is Carol. Hello there, Carol. Reminding yourselves, if you want to use a head pad for the floor, then obviously do that. Self-medicate always and forever. That's for Ken. Ken heard the word head pad and showed himself. Morning, Ken. We will need chairs either side. And Tom is now just filming me from outside. How dare he? <laughs> uh, it's not enough to be in front of a camera here. I have to have one behind me. Anyway, you will need, good morning, Leslie, um, your mat and your bars or whatever you're going to use as a work surface to do that workload from. Good morning, Diane and Jane. Get yourselves ready for abdominals and bar and it's part two. Part one was yesterday, part two is today. Um, in case you're wanting to know what the weather's like here, it's called dreary and it's very, very kind of foggy over Minifo, which means it's really misty. So you don't want to be here anyway. Um, we've done nothing but clean, etc, etc. And hopefully we'll leave today and our guests will be very happy with what we did. We're going to sit, ready for our start. I'll give you another 30 seconds to get yourselves ready. Um, remember when you sit, you're wanting to have it so that the mat and your body line up. Use the lines on your mat to give you a great sense of alignment. Once you're in your position, then this is how we're going to start. You're going to let your chin go to your chest and kind of crouch down as though you're hiding from the world. Breathing deeply in and out into your back muscles, into your upper back, into your rib cage. In and out, breathing as deeply as you can. Deliberately make it an exercise of breath, so the sense of a workload through the heart, lungs and circulations. The biggest evidence is that your belly, your abdomen will fill with air and then will also empty there. Think of a balloon um, enlarging and then decreasing right in the middle part of you. So you'll feel your abdominal push against the thighs on the inhale that's huge and on the exhale. And simultaneously, that's a really effective stretch for your back. And then we're going to change that from there. So one more deep breath in and deep breath out. And as you come up tall, take your hands behind, sit up tall. If you need to lean back a bit, that's fine. Do exactly the same kind of breathing activity just here. So huge inhale, expand the ribcage part of the front of you and the collarbones and a huge exhale. And again, that sense that you're filling a balloon with air. The balloon is right away from your ribcage down to your belly button. Big inhaling and exhaling. Inhale, taking as much air as you can. Again, like you did in your forwards bend, take this as an exercise. So you're exercising your intra-abdominal area, your intercostal area, all of the breathing muscles and the abdomen muscles. All right, this is your last one. And go back to neither too far bent nor too far um, sitting upright and allow the body to roll down do the pelvic tilts and laying the spine down with absolute alignment and once you're down there we're going to stay down for our abdominals reorganize your equipment and your kit make sure both knees are level nod the chin in and exhaling and inhaling find your imprint your lower back to gently connect so you've got your little pelvic tilts don't just squeeze your bum cheeks and pull under Exhale, pelvic floor, navel to spine, and get that true connection in your abdominals. I'm going to stay in my pelvic imprint now. Exhale, then, and curl up through the head, neck, and shoulders. 
Lock your knees, wriggle around and get the sense of being equal load behind you. Bring one leg and then your second leg up into tabletop, toes above knees and we're ready to roll. So, inhaling just here, exhale, push these legs away, breathe in, pull them back in again. Breathing out and breathing in. Big breaths and big breaths. Remember the rules, you allow the upper body to connect with the legs by holding using your bicep, your inner kind of inside the rib cage armpit area, that sense of helping you stay flexed. And you can see your abdominal muscles pulling the abdomen down. And the real prize as you do this bend and reach, which is my modified hundred, is that the abdomen should even on the inhale, pull away from your clothing whilst you're breathing. You've got three more like this. Remember the rules will still apply if it's too intense on your upper neck area. Then you roll down and you roll up. Always modify in the way that you've learned to. The next time you're up there, stay with the legs straight then take the spine down. Exhale, put your hands to the floor and a little bit of a roll up. So I'm pressing against the floor and doing the equivalent of reverse curve. It all depends on abdominal strength and the length of the hands. Now some of you may need to have your legs bent. You'll always bend your legs if straightening the legs goes straight into your lower back. If your hamstring length is good, then you'll find you can do this. Do three more. And two. Remember the exhale will always be the movement of spine rolling. And make that your last one. You're going to put your hands under your head, your legs are bent, curl up. Stretch out one leg and inhale, lower down. Exhale, curl over to your opposite knee. I've got my right leg straight, my left leg bent. If they aren't rules, they're just, the, and that's the way around I've done my legs. You can do the opposite way. Now, if you want to have one hand to the floor, obviously the hand that's um, on the side of the bent leg, then that's another way of waking up your obliques, the leg that is to the floor is strong and energised as it was yesterday. Just We're doing two more here and last one. Reach both hands, centre the body, pull the knees into the chest, take a moment, big breathings, in and out of your back into your imprint. Curling up, other leg goes down and they do the same side. Hand behind the head, I'm now demonstrating it with one arm. Straight, exhale, and. You're not necessarily trying to pull the knee to you, although it won't kill the exercise if you do. You're trying to take your armpit and your ribs. The gaze will always be in the direction of the side of the thigh, so I'm not turning to look straight at the screen that is in front of me, to the side of the story, I'm looking beyond this area here. Up you go with the breath out, inhaling. Strong leg that's straight, strong leg that's bent. And we have two more. One more. At which point, pull your knees into your chest and feel the abs. That's all we're going to do today because I need time for the actual bar work. So that was your abdominals. Now sit up tall and put your hands behind you. I've got the backwards lean, so I've got a slight tilt at the pelvis. Backwards lean, I'm deliberately pressing the ground away. My fingers are pointing sideways. They can actually point all the way back. It depends on mobility around the shoulder. My feet are pushing to the ground, kneecaps are level. Thigh bones are parallel, collar bones are wide open. Pull your shoulder blades towards each other. As you push the ground away, reverse bridge it on the breath out. Hold for a breath in and breathe out and pull your bottom back as far back as it will go. Exhale. Push into your heels, push into your hands, pull the inner thighs together and pulling back down again. Inhaling. And it's back to that sense of being able to press the ground away with everything that contacts the ground 
whilst taking a part of the body um, against gravity. So the body wants to float from the armpit to the front of the knee, but feel a connection from the hands through the armpit and the heels to the back of the thigh, hamstrings and glutes. And it will float if your pelvic floor, navel to spine, core connect, last one, and coming down. Now, to get rid of this, we exhale, forward bend here, and inhale, open to where you would just were. Exhale, spine bend forward, so you're creating movement in case you froze up through the upper body. Exhaling, and inhaling, and the ribcage bends on the breath out. Again, this is spinal shoulder mobilisation, and that will only take place with the breathing muscles leading the movement pattern rather than you just throwing your arms forwards and backwards. It's your last one, are you ready? Breathing out and breathing in. Hands to the side here. Um, backwards lean, so leaning onto the back of the sit bones and walk your feet in. We're going to do a bit of a teaser prep type position. I've got um, pelvic floor and pelvic tilt. In other words, it's the crimson imprint. Place your hands here, light fingers, exhaling, pick up both legs, then extend them, inhaling and back. Breathe out. We're waking up the hip flexors. It's fundamental, the hip flexors to the obliques for the workloads that you need and postural stability. When we go back to the bar, I want your flexors to know where they are and to know how to connect with the obliques. Obviously, once you've got this going, you can float your arms and your legs up and float them down again. Floating up with the arms and legs. Notice they're not leaning right back. Now, some of you might find you can't take your arms off. It doesn't matter. Keep your arms here and give yourself support. It's crucial that we have a 90 degree hip. I'll see you at the studio one day. Not very far away now. Last time, and stretch the legs out. Forwards bending, and we're coming onto our knees. Nearing the end of the floor scenario. <coughs> my, feet, my hay fever is shocking here. Anyway, here we go. You're doing the stretch. So we've just woken up the um, flexors and the obliques into controlling and containing pelvic stability. Now we want to lengthen out again. Remember where your heels are. Point your fingertips to your heels. Breathe deeply in and out. Shrink through pelvic floor, which will pull you up through your bikini line. And then backwards you go. Core connect. Remember you gaze straight ahead and up. And core connecting. It is so funny looking at my coffee machine and kettle and toaster. I don't think I've ever done plus in my kitchen. All right, and down we go. Just a couple more. Remember, if this stays right through the front of the quad, all the way through to the obliques, it's creating space back into the pelvic um, stabilizing sequence, as well as um, stability of these muscles. Let that go. You're gonna to go to your hands and knees, and have your hands, fingers spread, We'll take the body into plank, but we'll then take it to knees, to plank, to knees, to plank. To get that set up, know exactly where the ground is. Spread your fingers, take your load to the outsides of your hand, and then push one leg strong to the ground. So people often overreach and do that. Don't do that, really ground yourself from there. Big breath in, breathing out. Take your time, pelvic floor, navel to spine. Feel for the ground and push it away as you send your second leg out and have a look. Now that you're there, keep the chest over the thumbs, pull the knees back and pull the knees back. So my chest fractionally drifts as I want to lower my knees and then push the ground away. Pulling the knees down. The sense of reaching to the wall in front of you 
and pushing away simultaneously is really what this is about. You're pushing the ground away with the connections to the ground to your feet and your hands and then the trunk floats because you're using your breathing muscles which is um, respiratory and abdominals. Never forsaking pelvic floor. Three more. Two more. Last one. Pull your knees down and reach away. So have this lengthened reach. Let the head go down and down. Put your hands under your shoulders. Tuck your bottom under to get yourself up to kneeling. Before I get you to the bar, we're going to do a quick side bend, so that's part of what we're doing. So, kneeling straight upright. Take one arm up and prepping your side bend. So the side bend, we're going to do it with a plie at the bar is here. The sense of bending your rib cage and returning back. Other side. Side, side, side. Go and breathe to bend. And then breathe in and out to expand and loosen up. Okay, we're going to go back again. Other side, inhale. Exhaling. Feel for the bending side where your shoulders are relaxed. The bend is all under the armpit, the rib cage. The hips are stabilised, pelvic floor nail to spine. And you return back again. Up you go, breath. And let the breath lead you. Don't force your way through. And reach. Breathe, breathe, breathe to expand, loosen and mobilise. And return. Well done. That's the only mat work we're going to do for your abs. You can now remove your mat. And find your chair. Okay. Best not to put my mat in front of the camera. That was a silly move. So finding your chair, you want your very narrow plie, first position or Pilates position is, is the way they call it actually in the real world. Once you're in this position here, organise your clothing obviously. Um, I'm going to step back a bit because I've realised I need to make sure you can actually see my arms. If you can't see my arm, it, it's just disappearing. But everyone just pop, pop your arm here, your turn out. Keep the shoulders square and then side bend, reach and reverse. Now plie, which is really small, side bend and stand. I'm going to keep my arm up so there's less to think about. Um, I'm not interested, you can hear the bin there. I'm not interested in a massive range. Your range in turn out with a flat back. It's really quite small if you're stabilising. Okay, people, we're going to take this now into the squat. So you forward bend the ribs, and then you come back and plie. Forward bend the rib cage. Push the ground away and side bend. Thighs pull wide and hit the light and. That become, that's why I was keeping my arms restricted. I have to remind myself what I'm doing. Exhale. Remember, the rules are still the same. You're aiming to breathe life and mobility through the spine. So if your breath out is your bend, your breath in prepares for your bend and your plie, which is the hinged hip. And last time, bend, and extend, extend, standing, and bend, and there you go. Okay, from there then, you're going to take your leg and reach it over and pull it back. So this is the push and the pull that you're trying to train the body into. Find the ground, get rid of the ground. Find the ground, get rid of the ground. You're leaving your hand to the bar because it makes sense for the symmetry, okay? Remember that when we do this, you can hinge at the hip. You don't have to have a flat back. And I would actually encourage, in this only little sequence, exactly that. We've got one more. So you go down and stay. Because we're in a stay in shape here, 
Make sure both feet are level. Find your deepest range. Check that the move is um, being pulled back through the side bottom. And go straight to the pelvic tilts. Exhale. To curl these hip bones, inhale. To release. Breathe out. This is the moment where a lot of good happens through the pelvis. Things that you actually can't think about happen, but they happen because you ask the pelvic floor to interact with the flex rather than bum squeezes. So it's a reorganisation moment, rebalancing. People stay in your neutral now, wherever that is. And we're going straight into your normal um, standing position and then deepen down. Inhale to down you go, and exhaling. And crown of the head reaching to the sky. Inhaling down, your knees pull wide, your heels are loaded, and the outsides of your feet are encouraging you to pull your thighs wide out sideways. Open shoulders, shoulders level. Keep the core breath. And this next time you'll stay down. Stay there, know exactly where your breath is, palm down. Now pick up your heel, turn the palm to the ceiling and increase the dip and turn. Exhale. So every time the heel lifts, the palm turns, you deepen the plie and, deepen that plie and, deepening. It should feel lovely on the thighs. You've got two more. And then keep it up, keep the palm up, and add to this moment. Breathe. Keep loaded through both the um, sit, sit bones here, inside the knees, one heel up, one heel down. And keep your arm reaching to tension through the upper body muscles for four, breathing three, breathing two, and one. And elegantly, we're going to go up and land up. You're staying in turnout and you're reaching to your chair. You see that? Land. Place the landing and also place the leg reaching. So you've got your diagonal line, haven't you? From here to diagonal. And now stay here. What I'm going to suggest you do, I've had to come away from chair slightly, but anyway, I'm turned out on both legs. The first lowering phase, check both feet are level, and lift. Inhale, and lift. You're in turn out. In other words, the knee of the leg that's lifting and lowering is staying in turn out, as is the knee that you stood on. The leg that you stood on is bent. Both phases, the move up and the move down, require breathing and energy, okay? So there's not a moment when don't just drop the leg down, you draw it down and you reach to away. Keep the breath going. And going. And then keep it up there. You're in turn out. Place the hand without twisting. Lift. And lift. This should be in the sides of your bottom. If you're wearing spectacles, they should be steaming up. Keep the breath, don't lock out the standing leg. You've got four, three, two, open hip, one, and in you come. Go to your other chair, or move your chair, okay people, whichever way. Straight into your turnout, remember don't make it too big. There's little purpose having Charlie Chaplin feet if your thighs don't turn equally. Make everything feel level, plie, and side bend, and stand. Plie and squat. So we get straight into it. We've nurtured it when we're on the other side. Plie into your side bend. You can turn and look at the chair on the side bend if you want, and then the forward bend, more natural to our form. Keep the movement and the breathing rhythmical, okay? 
You finish off each move, so that's the downward space, the upward space, the bending phase, the straightening phase, the plie, and one more sequence. Okay, here we go, final squat forwards with a forwards bend, and here you go. Ready now to point, place, push, return. Point, place, and energy back. Finding that positioning, yeah? We go down, and you're aiming to have a perfect line. Now, if you've got a mat that doesn't move, you're still using your mat. My mat just stretches everywhere. It's an Abasok mat, it's not a studio mat. Um, your ability to place the leg, one more, is really what you're looking to achieve. Down to stay. Um, because we're staying to do exercises here, but you have to have an absolutely level um, foot to foot positioning. Go into your first plie. Make everything as it should be. Remember these muscles pull your thighs out, the weight is to the outsides of your feet, your toes are spread. Go to your pelvic tilts. If in this moment you see the significance of um, engaging pelvic floor, you'll unload everything to do with the lumbar spine, you'll rebalance muscles inside the pelvis. And it's much the same as lying on your back doing the pelvic tilts, you're just underlay because gravity is coming down above you, down through you. So sometimes you get a better feedback as to what really is taking place pelvically. This is the last one, and you leave yourself now in your neutral position. Keep your hand on your bar, keep everything aligned. Deepen your plie and stand up. So going down and up. Down you go. I don't care is the truth, whether it's an inhale or an exhale, or whether like me, because I so train my breath, I end up lengthened breathing down and up with one part of the breath and lengthened breathing. But that is, I think, probably because I do it so much. Anyway, it's not wrong to go down on an inhale and up on an exhale, or vice versa. Your next one, though, we will stay down there. Stay. Check your pelvis still is where it belongs. Perfect neutral relative flat back. Palms down, heel down. Palm up, heel up, and plie deeper. And so now you have to dig in deep to your breath. And, and deepen that plie. You'll start to feel muscles in the legs that are lovely. <laughs> muscles you don't often get to. Um, the muscle that goes through this um, inner side of the thigh all the way to the knee, makes up knee stabilisation um, on the inside of the knee. Perfect for old people. Two more. One more. And pulse. <laughs> all right, everything stays level. Pulse, breathing, breathing, reaching, breathing. Two, three, four, and up and up into your diagonal line. Plie, you can even add a side bend if you don't need to light fitting. So it's back to that energy, isn't it? You've got the energy, both legs. Nothing is wilting in the sun or the heat. Everything is full on engaging. And one more to stay. We'll stay here, hold your chair, Stay sideways, my chair fell over. Stay sideways onto your screen, be in turnout, standing leg bent as you lower, check the leg out, and lift. And so on your standing leg, the side bottom, your abductor, is helping you stabilise. The knee joint feels incredibly fine, and it's all about the size of your bottom. And you're breathing. Deep in and out. If you're wondering why I'm out of breath, my hay fever, asthma here in Aberystock has been pretty horrible. It's probably the dust in the house actually as we're cleaning it as well. Whichever way, don't worry about me. I'm all fine. You have two more before we stay for the wonderful pulses. Keep that diagonal line. 
and stay here for the pulses. Hold on if you want as you lift. Remember the kneecaps to the ceiling, the standing knee, the knees pointing ahead. If you need to hinge at the hip a bit more, that is fine. But any little dotic in the room, Leslie Snee, Debbie Davis, Sarah Butler, you must tilt the pelvis and, and get this little bit of a tucking under. Okay, there's nothing going on in the back. Everything's going on in the abductors, side bump, side bump, side for four, three, and two, and one, and as if it's all no big deal, standing up. Now face your chair and we're moving into your backwards lunge. So step the leg back. So the backwards lunge shape is here. Keep everything square, pelvically. Hold on to your chair as you go down and up. We've got eight straight forward lower and lifts. We now travel the demand through the front of the thigh on the leg that's the back leg. The heel is down on the front leg at the moment. Four more. Pelvically, you're drawing up from deep within and the knee joint on your front leg doesn't travel too far forwards, it's so to go beyond the toes. This next time as you go down, stay. Pick up your heel and deepen. So the front heel is up and you're into your quads. You're breathing deeply in and out. Into the back of the thigh, shrinking the abdominals in, finding, keeping, holding, breathing, probably hating me right now, for four, three, two more, let's go, one more, and straighten out, bring the legs together, and before you have a choice, take the other leg back. Find your form, everything square, pelvis must be square, and down we go. So you're Pushing the ground away, pulling the ground to you. Pushing the ground away with both legs. It's never a one leg. When both feet are to the ground, use both sensors. The heel on the front leg, the ball of the toe on the back leg. The pelvic floor connects your leg power to your trunk. And that's what makes Pilates, Pilates. Okay. You've got one more big range to stay down. Are you ready? Stay. Pick up the front heel and here we are. Deepening, I have to say, my quad is burning. I'm putting my front heel down. For some reason, this left leg, it's my knee surgery leg, is going, oh my goodness, for four, breathing through. I clearly haven't done this since being that. So two, 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 and... Yes, X marks the spot. Right, your next positioning is going to go back to turnout. Um, remember, don't have your feet so turned out that the thigh bones can't copy. Find your pelvic neutral to so shrink here and pick up to sit toes. So you're here. You're going to go up and down. Raising and rolling through the ankles. Pull up on pelvic floor, now to spine. Remember, you don't lean forwards or backwards. So this is the final sequence, and just when you feel like you want to kind of finish, this is where adaptation and progression take place in the body. So you take the body just that little bit further without creating pain anywhere to where really you probably not do. You've got four more of these. And three. And two more. Go up to stay, so stay in here. You've then got your straight flat back plie and you're holding all the way up. So the move bends and straightens. The move opens the thighs and pulls the thighs through the inner thigh V adductors. You zip up and hollow, three more, two more, Zip, hollow, one more to stay up, to so stay here, breathe. You're going to lower your heels down and I'm going to turn to the chair to make sure my demonstration is good. So here, you've pulled your heels back down again, 
bend both legs and take this leg out and have it turned out. So you're back to your leg lift and lower in turn out. It matters that you don't twist. Now your range of movement with both legs in turn out may be relatively small. If you're a dancer, it'll be bigger. Now if you're a bendy wendy, don't mistake moving your whole posture with actually the work they would be doing. The abdominal wall has to stay completely connected. As your leg reaches back and forth, in turn out, it's side bottoms on both legs working, different to the previous sequence, because now it's behind you and lifting. Okay, keep the trunk, shrink, and pull the rib cage under the navel in your brain, and then keep this leg long and reaching. Now you're going to pull the heel to the bottom, pull the knee out and push it away. Heel to the bottom and push. Heel into the sit bones, push them away. Heel in, I told you you need to bring your legs with you. Heel in, heel away. Knee comes almost to the elbow. It's like doing a curtsy in the air, isn't it? Do three more. And two. Last time, and legs together. You have two legs. So find true neutral, find your curtsy or your, your plie and take the other leg out. Remember, you will not have symmetry both sides. So the scent um, has to be worked with, with the ability of both sides. So the legs are both in turn out of the thigh bone. If for some reason your hip doesn't like this, you just do it in parallel, people. So don't ever do something in turn out that the body goes, no thank you. Now, I, to let you know, on, when I do my left leg reaching up and down, I get a completely different muscle recruitment going on through my bum cheek um, into the side bottom. So it shows where the weak glute maximus is, um, or the asymmetry that goes on. Which is why we do single leg work, to give the chance to the body to reorganise and rebalance. Are you ready? Stay up. Now you've got your pull of your knee in and push. Resist, twist. So that knee pulls like a leprechaun, almost to the opposite, to the elbow on the same side. So it's my left knee pulling to my elbow sort of wide, you could argue. The easiest thing is to drop the leg. Don't. <laughs> Refuse to drop it. There's as much work going on with the standing leg as there is <laughs> the leg that's free in the air. Go good for four, three. Stay as square as you can. Two. And last one. And oh. Okay, people, if you can't feel these sides of your bottom, then you have a strange world, or you want to neutral. We're going to finish like we did yesterday with the stretch. Walk your feet, make sure they're level, and then hinge at the hip. Now, that will expose immediately the um, line here, where you've had workload. Then from there, bend the knees, and look beyond your chair. So my legs are bent, I'm creating an extension of the spine. From there, breathe in. Breathing out, I'm gonna roll the spine, pelvic floor, shrink the tongue, and roll up to my round back. It's like doing cat. I'll breathe into my lumbar spine, don't use your bum cheeks. Breathe out and repeat. Traveling the tailbone to the sky, pulling the chest forwards. Shrinking the abdominals in, and again, exhaling, pelvic tilt, curl, curl, curl. And as I look at my knees now, I'm going to take one hand off the chair, second hand off the chair, and go straight to the floor. And then exhaling, stretch the legs, inhale, bend. Belly to spine. And now if you were too hot and holding your head down is horrible, don't do it. That's your body telling you don't do it. Low blood pressure, or just pure out of breath, <laughs> then obviously be really sensible people, you know the rules. People, next time your legs are bent, put one hand and the other hand on the thigh. Leave your head hanging as you give yourself a spinal roll for the final time. 
roll through your shoulders, and there you have it. That was part two, um, floor to bar. And I certainly feel like I got a really good connection through the whole of the systems that were designed in the workout. So here's to you to have a great day. And that was video number 69, which means tomorrow's video number 70. Um, have a great day. I hope this weather's a little bit better where you are. Just here, it's a little bit rubbish. Um, and thank you for bearing with me in the kitchen in Aversock. I will be back in the studio tomorrow and hoping to um, continue what we're doing. So lots of love to you all. Stay with me and I'm going on to Zoom now. Have a nice day. Bye bye.